The other major story today, aside from the death of Lyndon Johnson, the tragic death and the hopes for peace in Vietnam, is the decision of the United States Supreme Court. It handed down a historic decision about abortion. The court said in a 7-2 to decision that in the first three months of pregnancy, only the woman and her physician may decide whether she may have an abortion. In the second three months, all the state may do is regulate abortion procedures. And only in the final three months of pregnancy can the state forbid abortion. It was 50 years ago. Supreme Court justices sided with a Texas woman who used the legal pseudonym Jane Roe against the defendant, Dallas District Attorney Henry Wade. At the time, abortions were illegal in Texas. Attorneys Linda Coffey and Sarah Weddington challenged that law, with the case eventually going to the Supreme Court. The landmark ruling legalized abortion across the country. Today's decision came as a shock to both anti- and pro-abortionist forces. Well, it means that January 22nd, 1973 will stand out as one of the great days for freedom and free choice. This allows a woman free choice as whether or not to remain pregnant. This is extraordinary. How many millions of children prior to their birth will never live to see the light of day because of the shocking action of the majority of the United States Supreme Court today? Whatever their legal rationale, Seven men have made a tragic utilitarian judgment regarding who shall live and who shall die. For some women, this law will mean the difference between having an abortion or not. For many others, the law will mean simply having the abortion in their own state instead of traveling to another state like New York. The majority decision was written by Justice Harry Blackman. He said that a woman's right to abortion fell within a right to privacy protected by the 14th Amendment's due process clause. Justice William Rehnquist wrote the dissenting opinion. He claimed the court had taken the concept of liberty too far, writing, quote, Liberty is not guaranteed absolutely against deprivation, only against deprivation without due process of the law. From the beginning, pro-abortionist forces have seen this issue as a question of freedom of an individual's choice. The freedom to have an abortion is now legal in every state. The basic legal fight is in effect over. But according to the Roman Catholic Church, the moral fight will never end. And the church will continue to instruct women and institutions not to take advantage of this choice. Now the battle over abortion rights is entering a new phase with Roe versus Wade overturned 50 years after that historic decision. For more, let's bring in Tony Award-winning author of The Vagina Monologues and activist V. Ensler, whose memoir, Reckoning, will be released later this month. Also, we want to bring in Dr. Jill Gibson, medical director of Planned Parenthood Arizona. Both join me now. Thank you for joining us on this Friday night. V, I want to start with you. You know the reproductive rights movement from before, Roe. How do you reflect on the past 50 years, especially where we are today? Well, I think it's, it's really astonishing to even think that on the anniversary of what should be an incredible celebration of our abortion rights protected by Roe versus Wade, we are here um, in outrage and resistance. And let me begin by saying it is a sorrowful decision. It is not a decision that is supported by 85 percent of this country. It's a fringe decision by, in my opinion, a very illegitimate court. So I want to begin there. I have lived through a time, you know, I was 19 50 years ago, and I lived in a, uh, when I was young where there weren't abortion rights, and I know what women lived through and what it was like to feel like you had no bodily autonomy. You couldn't make decisions over your own choice, over your own body, over your own decision to have a child or not have a child. And I will say for myself, um, I was a person who grew up in a very difficult, violent family. I was not in good shape when I was 18 years old. I had um, really lost my way. I was into drugs and alcohol. I was a mess, and I got pregnant. And had I not been able to have an abortion at that point in my life, my life and the life of that child would have been fundamentally destroyed. I did not want a child. I could not support a child. I wasn't able to have a child. So I know for me personally, that decision allowed me my life. And I wouldn't be the person I am today had I had the burden of that child and I had no ability whatsoever to raise a child. So if I think where we are today and I look what's happening, it's it's 
absolutely enrages me. It breaks my heart, but I don't believe this is the end. And I, I, I think we're at a moment, it's a pause, and we are going to get these rights back. Dr. Gibson, the law is different now state by state because of this ruling last year. You're in Arizona. What's the situation there? What's changed in the last seven months? The last seven months have been a significant roller coaster. We have had to pause abortion services. I was present in our clinic and our health center on the day of the Dobbs decision where I had to greet patients in the waiting room and let them know that I would not be able to legally provide them the services that I had promised I would and that they needed and deserved. We've then had to pause, resume, um, pause, and finally we are now again able to resume abortion services, but there are still real significant restrictions on abortion care here in Arizona. The one thing that we have really recognized is that the true reality is that abortion has always been a medical necessity throughout all of history, and that will not change. That truth will not change with abortion bans and regulations and restrictions. We've just seen that patients are really bearing the significant burden of these decisions that politicians and lawmakers have made. Every day I sit and listen to reasons that patients cannot be pregnant, and I have had heartbreaking encounters. For example, this week I took care of a patient who didn't wanna leave our abortion clinic after she'd had her procedure. She was staying in a domestic violence shelter. One of the conditions of her stay was that she had to be pregnant. And she was so fearful that when she got back to the shelter, it would be discovered that she was no longer pregnant and that she would be expelled. And she had nowhere safe to go. We just absolutely have to demand better. I'm going to ask one more question here because we're tight on time. We have less than a minute. Uh, v, I, I want to ask you, we had an NBC nationwide exit poll during the midterms. It, it showed that a majority of voters said abortion should be legal in all or most cases. Where does this go next? Well, I just think I, I want to just also honor the amazing work that Jill and all the frontline activists are doing. We have seen the incredible work that's happening in the states to demand, you know, individual states that are still fighting for their rights. We cannot accept this. This is not an end point. We're going to see this weekend thousands of people in the streets who believe that abortion is a right. My bodily autonomy will be mine, and over my dead body will this continue to go on. And I want to say that I, I believe that when we see the end of democracy, because the countries that have pushed back, the four countries in the world, like the U.S., that are denying de de abortion and have pushed back on those rights, are countries where democracy is dying. Women have a right to a bodily autonomy. That is just the, the, the nature of being a human being. And um, I really believe we are going to see an amazing fight ahead, and this is certainly not over. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.